Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you all are having a wonderful weekend. Uh, after a crazy last week in the markets, I thought a weekend video might make a little bit of sense. We'll start by taking a look at the big picture. So all of our indice markets uh, we will use uh, things like the put call ratio to understand where we're currently at in the markets. And then we'll move on to uh, spending some time on some focused markets, uh, a handful where I think there's some decent opportunities where you may have some potential trade ideas if you think that we may have a bounce in this coming week. Now, keep in mind that that's our expectation that we would have a bounce given some of our big picture views. However, that's not by any means guaranteed uh, or what will happen. So we'll also set in place some criteria, some things that we're going to look at to help us figure out if there's going to be a bounce, uh, even if it is a dead cat bounce that you can start to participate in, uh, or if we should really be looking more at some of our short opportunities. All right, so let's start by looking at the big picture view first. So let's load in our utility labels here. And once we have them in, we're on a daily chart and using our utility labels, we can see that our put call ratio has now gone from bearish uh, to signal us to be more in neutral territory, right? 0.91. And we're approaching that area where you should almost start to be looking at some bullish trades. That hasn't happened yet, but if that happens, then these uh, chart bubbles will start to light up green or these labels, excuse me. Now, apart from that, we see all of our markets are currently red, which is to be expected, except one, right? And that's XLU. So XLU is going to be one of those focused markets where we spend some time looking because while all of our other sectors are weak, uh, we see XLU is relatively strong compared to uh, the other sectors, right? Even another one which we'll talk about, which is XLP, which also shows us that we're in uh, bearish territory off of our utility labels. Now let's move on to a chart of the S&P. And if we see just how low price dropped, we can see that that takes us to August 2019 or thereabouts on that low, right? And so you hear this uh, saying a lot of the times, but this is that proof. This is the opportunity, the case study that we have to study this and at least learn something from this recent crash, which is the idea that markets move up a lot slower. So this was a move of right around what, six to eight months almost uh, that we lost in right around five days, right? So I think this starts to put in perspective just how quickly you can lose some of these gains uh, and how that can happen just like that, right? The a span of a week, we just continued plummeting straight down. And if you weren't already bearish, it was really hard to start to get excited about participating in the markets simply because you didn't know that we would continue having the kind of bearish follow through that we did instead of having more of a sideways chop bounce down to this level, All right? So now that this has happened, if you are looking at a bounce, let's start to focus in on some areas where there's opportunities. So we'll start with XLU and here we have our Fibonacci uh, drawn and this is off of our December swing high to swing low. So let's expand this so we can actually have that in our chart view and we can see we have our swing high to swing low and this is from our November period but we have our most recent swing high to swing low which encompasses this previous swing high to swing low on XLU. And there we see that we've bounced perfectly into our level 6124 and then bounce from there. Now, one thing to keep in mind, however, is when that bounce happened here on a three minute chart that happened into the final few minutes of the close, right? We hit almost exactly to a T that 6124 and then we ripped higher. Now, for those of you that use these retracements, these levels, you may want to try and participate in these markets as close to the 6124 area as you can get. But that gives you a general idea of the trade here. Right. And another uh, sort of synergy with our other indicators is the idea that we have our V score that's now approaching that zero area standard deviation line. And so this is that pure VWAP line off of February 1st, 2019. And using those levels, we now see that we're starting to gain support. That zero line on XLU, if we come in and tweak our labels, takes us to 61.49. Again, very much in this zone. And so this becomes that area where we're looking at participating in the marketplace, right? In XLU, looking for a bounce up higher. We're trying to play uh, the most defensive sort of plays uh, to see if we do get this move up, uh, essentially hoping that if, if we get this move up and it's a little bit more short-lived, then XLU gives us an opportunity where there's a little bit more consistent money flow compared to, say, some of the other riskier sectors like XLK, et cetera. So XLU is that first setup. Now in the case of XLU, there's only two squeezes that we see and that's on the 10 and 15 minute chart, both of which have bearish moving averages for the moment. So that's something that doesn't work in our favor if we just drill down to those charts real quick to see what that squeeze looks like. 
We are having slightly higher lows, but our moving averages are still pointed to the bearish direction. And so this is a sign that you may want to look at to see if we ultimately get the follow through up to the areas that you may be looking at. Now, some potential targets for XLU would be something like our halfback level, which takes us to 65.90. You could also start to take some of your position off at each of these uh, subsequent FIB levels. So 64.67 would be the next one, assuming uh, price opens up higher from here and we fill this gap. And that gives you a nice opportunity to six, take some contracts off, move your stop to break even and see if we get that move to the halfback level and continue to manage your position from there. Uh, I'm not sure that you can expect a 1272 extension type of move here, and I would be a little bit more aggressive about taking profits. Now, moving on to the next symbol, that will be XLP. If we come to XLP, we see something very similar with our Fibonacci levels. 56.17 is from our December swing high, swing low area. On our V-score, we have uh, broken through that zero standard deviation line. So you would expect some sort of a reversion, at least to that first standard deviation level. And that area that you may be looking at as a potential target could be something like 62.35, which takes you right near where these moving averages are. That does seem a little bit aggressive, especially for your first target. And so another way, very similar to XLU, is to once again draw our FIB levels and look for both a halfback along with a fill right around that 59.40 area. All right, so those are some opportunities that you may be looking at. Now, if we go to XLU, the one thing that we'll talk about in XLU Along with XLP, this is true for basically all the trades, but we'll use XLU as the example, is the current IV percentile. That's taking us right around that 100% zone, which makes selling premium, so selling something like a put credit spread, a lot more attractive to try and play this move up higher than looking at just straight calls. Now, with uh, some of these bullish plays, you would also expect the VIX to start to cool off a little, right? We almost approached that 50 area, which doesn't happen too often. So you would expect the VIX to cool down. And that's where I think you could also start to suck up some of the premium from selling options as opposed to buying premium. And then finally, the last chart we'll talk about is in gold. Now, gold had a nice move down lower. Again, if we draw our swing high to swing low, this time using our September 2019, to our November 2019 swing high to swing low, we'll notice that gold has made a very similar move as well. If we also draw our 100% uh, extension from this previous swing high, that happens to overlap with close to the bottom of this wick candle and also where we have our 50 period simple moving average. So gold starts to look really attractive in this zone of 146.82 to 148.03. Uh, now, ways to play this might be using the GLD options or the micro futures contract, right? Because we do see on our V score that our zero standard deviation line is still a little bit of ways. If we try and get the price for that, we can see that that price comes in closer to 137.33, which would represent a little bit more significant of a sell off in gold, taking us close to our November uh, 2019 lows. Now, you may not necessarily expect that. Uh, you may expect that gold starts to bounce from here, and that's where we're really playing a bounce from this one standard deviation line onwards. And looking for potential targets, if you aren't using something like the Fibonacci's already, you could use the V-score and target something like the two standard deviation line, which takes you to 156.66. And on our charts, 156.66 happens to overlap right in between this 1618 and 200 extension level, right? So that makes sense. Now, the last thing that we'll talk about in this video is the idea of seasonality. So if we bring in uh, the market QView charts, we'll start by taking a look at the S&P 500. Now, in the case of the S&P 500, we expect the markets to fall between January and March, according to our five year composite rating. Right. That would suggest that we are following the usual parameters. If we take a look to see what's happened, while well, yes, the markets have fallen in a way where we have these coronavirus scares, etc., we are simply just following the seasonal pattern so far. Sure, they've fallen a lot steeper than I think this five year composite suggests, but the pattern is still there where we keep falling towards uh, that March. Uh, mid early March area before we start to pick back up and look for a move up higher. So timing also makes sense with some of these trades. Now, another market that you can start to take a look at could be something like the Russell 2000 in which you see something very similar as well, but we have slightly less of a steeper move. If we look at the Russell here, we see something similar as well, right? But the reason I bring up the Russell is because the Russell is also one of those that is staying a little bit more contained inside of its volatility box, right? Especially using our daily volatility box levels, you can see that it's staying inside of our aggressive volatility box a little bit better than some of our other markets. So a place where you have some more controlled volatility. 
Now, another futures market that we'll take a look at, which we discussed, is gold, right? And so if we pull up gold right here, in the case of gold, you see for essentially almost the past 15 and five years, uh, gold has started off lower in January and then made a continuous move up higher into the rest of the year. Now, these aren't exact science numbers, so we take them with a grain of salt. But if we look to see on the gold market what the charts uh, look like, we do see that we have a pullback, except instead of the end of January to February, this pullback came a little bit later, but a pullback nonetheless. Right. So that then again supports our gold setup here. And this area, 148.03 to 146.82, starts to become places where you can look at entering and looking for a move up higher. And for those of you that don't really enjoy trading this sort of increased volatility, at least in the S&P and the NASDAQ and the other indices, start to look at some of these markets where we are having a little bit more controlled volatility because they are a little bit easier to trade. And you can start to play any sort of ebbs and flows that we have in the marketplace going forward, whether it is up or down. And for our stock volatility box members, we will send out a, a trending list on Sunday night for some potential stocks that you can look at for Monday morning onwards. All right. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next update. Thank you.